Hey, it's Jason with Threefold Solutions here to talk to you about Planning Center People Forms. We want to talk about forms because it's a major way of uh, people bringing their information into our database. And there's so many different uses for forms inside of Planning Center. I just want to talk about a few of them, but there are plenty of ways you can utilize forms. First off, let's talk about what do we see on the forms kind of homepage. This is the, the, you know, main page for forms here. And it looks very much familiar, like lists a little bit, like workflows a little bit. Uh, each of these has a very familiar layout. We have a campus dropdown that we can search through. And we also have a category option here. I highly recommend, just like I have in other videos, that you utilize these categories. And if it's specific to a campus, if your church has more than one campus, utilize that campus dropdown and these are found in the settings. So let's just take a look at one of these pre-existing forms here. Let's look at the plan of visit. You know, for example, that's one we could just talk about in a moment, but let's look at the settings. And notice over here in the filters area, again, looks very familiar, kind of like lists looks. We've got a campus dropdown and we've got a category area. We can add different categories here. And I would highly recommend if this category is for visitors, you create a category for visitors. And that way, you know that any form that you're going to create in the future that also relates to first time guests or visitors will have that category. Maybe you have a prayer. Uh, type of form and you want to create that. Maybe it's a care ministry uh, type of form, men's, women's, whatever it may be, um, just create a category for that. It will help you when you end up with, you know, tens of lists that are built up over time. So you can filter those quickly and find what you're looking for. In this case, maybe it's visitors. We're going to assign visitors to this plan of visit. And then maybe it's specific to just our Westmont campus. So I just want this form to be associated with that campus. So just remember that right off the bat. Um, next, you do have some other things such as recently viewed, jump right back to that form you were looking at yesterday or open, closed and archived. We're going to talk more about open forms, closed forms and archive forms when we look at the settings inside of different forms here in just a moment. So let's talk about how we create and utilize forms. Now I'm going to click on new form. And the first thing that we're presented with is this untitled form title and description. This is where our actual title would go. And maybe with something like this, it's a, um, oh, I'm going to say a volunteer interest form. And in this situation, you know, we might type in that title and give it a description, but we want people who are interested in serving to fill out this form. So in this form, as a default, you're always going to get first name, last name, and email address collected. That's just a default. That's the way Planning Center forms work. Now, to get additional information, we have to use these form blocks or fields over here on the right. And so we can click on any of those, such as phone number, and it'll just show up next in line. We can click on address or maybe birth date. And each one of those, and I'm going to move this little bubble over here, each one of those just keeps adding on to the list. Now, Every time you add one and you click on it, you're going to see this little three bar option here. And that three bar option presents you with additional criteria, such as making this field required. Some have more criteria than others. And we'll look at other examples down the page. But in this case, we're looking for volunteers who are or people who are interested in volunteering. And so we're just collecting a basic set of information. Now we can also say, please choose your campus. So we know which campus you're actually interested in serving at. And maybe we're also going to, you know, look at some additional basic field information. And notice we have three types of fields or groups of fields. We have the profile fields, we have the workflow fields, and then we have the basic fields. Now workflow fields are very powerful. Workflow fields allow us to give someone an option to check or select and then have them be automatically added into a workflow for future follow up. So in this instance, we might use checkboxes. And in this case, we might say um, interest or interested in serving where. And in this case, we might have some serving areas. So maybe it's the kids ministry. Or we can add additional options, and maybe it is in the prayer ministry area. 
and maybe there's an additional one and maybe that's in the greeter area you know um, any of these uh, are are available to be utilized but what you'll see here is every time you start to add more criteria you're going to find that they have an option and you can select a workflow so in this case maybe we have a volunteer onboarding workflow so when somebody selects kids ministry we automatically will add them to this volunteer onboarding workflow that's powerful and it's a really slick feature that i love about planning center forms and these fields so maybe we have somebody who's interested in the prayer ministry and they're going to go to the volunteer onboarding uh, workflow as well but each one of these might have their own so maybe it's the prayer ministry volunteer onboarding maybe it's the kids ministry volunteer onboarding and they can have a separate workflow for each one of these but in our instance they're all going to go to the same one just for this example now you can additionally add criteria so let's talk about logic and conditions so we that's how workflow fields work and you can have a single checkbox multiple checkboxes or even a drop down of choices to to move people into different workflows but what about when you want to send something uh, such as maybe some additional information over with this when they fill it out and you want to say when you check this box then we're going to show some additional information so in this instance maybe we will say um, are you a member and we might ask that question and then we might make that required because you know to serve in our ministry we'd like to know if you're a member or not so we basically have, are you a member? And maybe in this case, you might use a drop down rather than a single checkbox. So in this case, you might say, are you a member? And a question mark here. And you might be able to do a couple different things. Okay, we'll add some criteria or options here, such as yes. And then we'll add another one, no. And then when we save this one, we now have an option to say, are you a member? Yes or no. Now, when we do that, we might additionally say, enter some information here, such as a date. When did you join the church? Question mark. Now in this one, we can add some conditions. And when we click on conditions, it says, ask this question if. Now, in this case, we can go down and we can say, let's use our second member choice and ask this question. If are you a member is answered or is answered? Yes. And in this case, we'll say, are you a member is yes. So if somebody makes that choice, they're going to see this additional field. So that's kind of how the logic works. And you've got this conditions icon that shows up on that field to let you know that it's there. So let's take a look at how we proof this. So once we create our form, we have this view public form button up here. And this allows us to actually see how this form works and interact with it. So once we click that, we're going to get what we call the church center view of that form. And remember, church center is the public facing view that our congregation sees for planning center criteria and items. And in this case, it's the volunteer interest form that we're sharing with them. Now I'm logged in. So you see immediately that my information is gathered here, my first and last name and my email address. But I have some additional fields that we asked people to fill out, such as phone number, address, and birth date. And then we have the campus one. And then we have this interested in serving workflow fields. So when I check this box, I'm going to be sent directly to that workflow when I submit this form. The other thing is we had these two different, are you a member? Now, if you check this box, it's just check it or don't check it. But this one had choices and it was either yes or no. And when we select yes, we immediately see a, a new option pop up here, which is when did you join the church? And now we can put a date in there. And so we basically can say only show this when this choice is made. And that's what those conditions do. So that's a great way to show that. Now, while we're here, I want to point something out about this form. Maybe we want to make this public and we want to share this form. There are a couple ways to do that, but I want you to see down in the lower right hand corner, shareable code. When you click on this, you're going to get this QR code that pops up. You can download this QR code right here and then use that 
on a pre-service slide, on a sign in the lobby, on an email, wherever you want to use it. You can use this QR code so people can scan that code and jump directly to this form and fill out your form. It can be used for all different kinds of things. And one of the things that I love about it is you can also grab the URL off of this form. If we go back over to forms and we jump over quickly across the top here to settings, there's some additional things. We talked about filter settings already, but we also have the ability to grab this, what they call embed code. And this is just the URL that this form is using for people to access it. And sometimes we might want to update a menu item on our website, our church website, and we can just copy this and give it to our IT folks, our marketing or communications folks, whoever runs the website. And we can basically copy that and provide it to them and they can update that for us. So when people make that choice on the website, they're going directly to our form. Now, while we're here on settings, I wanna point out that we do have that familiar collaborators area again. This is something to keep in mind. Collaborators are the people who can also see our form that we've given access to. So it's kind of like permissions. We're giving them permissions. We can give permissions to specific people and in this case, maybe Luke Skywalker is going to get permission to it. But wait, Luke's not a manager. Luke is not able to see this. So in this case, it says, show me a viewer or editor with that name. Now, we may want to find somebody who's actually going to fit the criteria. Well, maybe they're already a manager. And I, I lied. I said Luke's already a manager. He is a manager. And, and ultimately... Now, remember, the people that we're going to add here, if they're already a manager, they're going to be included in this group. But if somebody's just a viewer and we want to add them to it, maybe we're going to add Austin here. He's not a manager. He's just a viewer. But I'd like to give him access to this form. And maybe I'm going to give him manage access so he can participate in changing the fields. But ultimately, you must keep in mind that all managers are defaulted as a collaborator to your form. So if this form is something that deals with sensitive information, such as um, care ministry or other private type information, always bear in mind that all managers will always have access to see all forms. Something just, just to note. Now, also you have this notification list down here. You can click here and add people's email addresses and notify somebody, or in this case, you can just type their name. So in this case, maybe I want Austin to be notified anytime someone completes this form and submits it. And I'm going to send an email notification to Austin to let him know somebody has filled out this form. That's one way. Now, if we're also sending this over to a workflow, which in our case, we actually set up some fields to do that. So when somebody fills this out, they're going to be routed to a workflow called volunteer onboarding. That person will get a notification that that card or that profile has been added to their workflow and they need to follow up with them. So that's just another thing to keep in mind. It's part of a process and we've set that up here. Now, additionally, we have all kinds of fields. We have custom fields that can be updated. So in this case, we might say, are you baptized? And if so, um, are you baptized? If so, please add the date. And in this case, the date can be a field that you pull from a particular custom field. And in this case, maybe that's a, you know, another one of those custom fields. In this case is baptism. And when we save that and somebody fills out this information, it's going to be written directly to their profile in that field. So we're actually allowing them to help us update their profile and gather some of their information. And we can use this with all kinds of custom field information. So sometimes this might be a new member form, or this might be a contact card, and we want them to provide some information to us. And this is where they can provide that. Now, sometimes people like to use prayer request forms and we've got this notes criteria here or field when we click on that we might say do you have a prayer request and in this instance we might say add this to a specific note category maybe we have prayer requests as a note category now this is the type of thing where maybe on that note category we have people who are going to be notified when somebody fills out 
a note called prayer request. And anytime this actually is filled out in this area here, they will get a notification because a new note in prayer request has been created and added. So that's another use for forms. Maybe you just want to have a prayer request form all different kinds of possibilities that you can use forms for. But just remember, forms are the intake part of getting people's information into Planning Center. And it also helps initiate processes. Now, one other thing I want to mention is the familiar automations tab. We can create automations here as well. And these are very much like the actions and automations we've seen in other areas. But when somebody submits this form, just that's our only choice in this one. We can do a different action or run a different action inside of one of these other apps that we have access to. In this case, maybe it's people and maybe we want to send an email from a template. When somebody fills out this form, we have an automation in place that sends an email from this template and it sends something specific like maybe happy birthday or something even more specific. So utilize the automations to either add people to a workflow. And in this case, it's all or nothing. If we add somebody to a workflow with an automation, it's everybody. Everybody filling out this form gets added to this workflow. Maybe this is a new visitor's workflow. Maybe it's a first time guest. Maybe it's a plan your visit and we need to take steps to follow up with them. No matter what we do, we can set up multiple automations and each time somebody fills out the form, that automation runs and it either adds information to their profile, sends them an email, adds them to a workflow. It could even check them into an event. It could add them to a group. It could sign them up for a registration and it could even add them to a team within services or add a tag to their services profile. All different kinds of possibilities with automations. You have to use them, play with them, test them, see how they work and get to know them a little better, but lots of power under the hood with automations. That's pretty much what you can do with different types of fields on forms in Planning Center Forms. I wanted you to see this from the all-inclusive side of things. There's lots of different ways to use them, but in our example, we just covered a few. You're going to need to explore some of these different fields in order to get more familiar with it. I think you'll have some fun building these forms and recreating some of the processes that you might have in place already now using Planning Center Forms.